up to you. <laughs> no fancy. If you want to go, you can go. Nothing stopping you. China, they are funny. Take a picture both together, your mommy and daddy. It is cool. What you want to see. If yeah. you want to see the mountain, yeah. there. If you want to see the monster, you have to go exactly to the ridge. Ah, the ridge is a long way. From here to there, five hours. Ah. Where is the cave? Okay, guys. Where is the cave? You have to after one hour later. If you want to go to the cave. Okay, I've seen not so many of you. But that's easy also for me. Now I want to move here, all of you to go to that one. To see the monastery, to see me and I to see you.
There are more than 2,600 meters of snow. The Bulgarian mountaineering, the Bulgarian open is not exactly from the north face of that. So, now I'll tell the story of that uh, place very fast. So, to tell about that guy saying, I don't know, you want, maybe you have the coin also on that. You can see, here there is one stain with uh, the stone with the plastic hand and the oil. Not make a mistake with oil, it was very that guy, he lived in the end of the night, the beginning of the night. He came from a rich family, but he was very disappointed all the neighbors of society. So that person left everything and he became carried to the in the neighbor mouth. And he lived in one country. But the people with the society, they believe that he was something uh, like a witcher, so that's why they burned his home. And after that, they banished him from the mountain. After that, he was more disappointed from the medieval people. And uh, he followed like us, that uh, river. And he continued from that way. And two kilometers away, he found one cave. And in that cave, he lived for the next 12 years. Terrorizing all the uh, uh, animals, hunting the animals in that mountain, gathering some berries, like blueberries, blackberries, and stuff. And something happened with uh, the people. They start. Uh, Speaking about a holy man living uh, in the heart of Rima Mountain, a man who could uh, speak with the animals, a man who could uh, cure the sick man. Just imagine, we speak about 10th century and there were so many rumors about him in all the Bulgarian countries, you might say. Also in the court of the Bulgarian king. And the Bulgarian king by that time, Peter, he was a little bit afraid about his popular. So that's why he decided to come here to see the miracle of that holy man. That's why he came here with a test. One very sick note. He came with his army, with his train. And Sivan, he passed that exam. And after that, Peter he was so surprised that he wanted to give half of uh, his treasure to him. But from the table, he took only some vegetables and food. And after that meeting between the king and the family, many people, they became followers of St. Alan's Church. And they built their cottages. You all the cave. And this is how exactly the first Rewa monastery happened. And the first chief monk was Saint Ivan of Rewa, and he wrote the code of laws how to be monk here. So if you want to be a monk, you have to follow that code. And now you can see the plain thing, the iron. One man wants to be alone, away from the society, now this is the most significant place in Bulgaria. 95% of all first people. Now, why, why we are here, not there where it is, that's why later we are here. Because during the medieval times, the people, when they heard about churches, monasteries, they told about the old fewer than the church, so that's why that monastery was great so many times. That's why one student found out that the uh, monastery was also very important for the church, he moved the monastery here. Why? Because on the south is that river. Here, there is another river called Druslavitz. The only way, as you can see here, you get exactly the elevation of the mountain. So the only way to attack the monastery is exactly from the parking lot from where we came. So all this part now of the monastery here, it's that tower there. It was made like a keep or like a dungeon. This is just for the protection of the monks from all the exactly that raiders and pirates. And yes, we're in a holy place. But inside that uh, tower, there was a prison, and the monks, they caught them there. That uh, monastery took the rights in uh, the end of the uh, 14th century from the King Ivan Shishman. So that's why I told you that all the lands on the rocks there, uh, after the town of Rio, to that monastery free of charge. You know, the land is the most important thing for everyone. So that's why all the restaurants here, they pay to the chief monk. Uh, you know, the Balkan kingdoms, uh, most of them, they fell into the hands of the Ottomans. And uh, they knew that most of the servants were Christians. So that's why they gave a lot of rights, including rights to that monastery. And some of the gifts of the Ottoman sultans, you can see in the Rima Monastery Museum of Lake.
The museum is worth it because of two things. To see how it looks like one of the rooms of the monks and to see one cross made by one of the monks in uh, between 17th and uh, eight, uh, let's say between 18th and uh, 19th century. 12 years he made a cross like that side and yet he lost his side and he made an magnificent masterpiece. You can see the nativity and the formation of Jesus Christ. 600 feet on the side. Well, that's why it's a masterpiece in your free time. If you want, you can visit that cross in one of the rooms of the monks. I want to tell you that that monastery had uh, many sunrises, many sunsets. And exactly some of that sunsets were happened during the Ottoman period when we speak about 16th and 17th century. And after that, there was a sunrise. And that monastery was the uh, source of uh, not only the religion but also for the knowledge, education, that stuff. And the best years of that school, monastery were between exactly the end of the 18th and beginning of the 19th century. And during that time, yes, there were more than 300 monks. Over there, <coughs> it's the repertoire where the other gate. And uh, there, it's a museum now, you can see a spoon bigger than my size. But much better Eastern, 300 hungry monks. Now, there, that monastery is still functional. Just say your number. Have you read something? How many are the monks now? 50? Okay, another suggestion? Cold. Cold. Colder. Ten. Ten. Okay, maybe you read something. Hey. Now why they are on the I told you that Bulgaria was a socialist country. Church, Christianity, communism, you cannot combine. But that's why they removed all the monks from here and this was like open air museum and I can tell that in some of that living quarters the Socialist Party made a lot of pipes. Anyway, they returned the rights to that monastery in, uh, after the whole Socialist uh, system here. Uh, exactly in 1990 they returned the rights but there were not so many people that they wanted to be monks because one of the things is that if you want to be a monk, they take the God, the sign of the thing right here. It's still bit hard because many loud tour guides, many tourists. And uh, maybe you heard something like a sound to record of eagles, hawks, and shotgun. Yes, we are in a cold place, so you can hear a shotgun. Later, maybe you can hear it again. This is just to scare the swallows, that birds, not to mess in the corners where the world is. Now that birds, they don't care about that sound, it is just uh, to disturb the dice. And now I want to tell that living photo that you can see their own birds. You can see their own four forks. First four with stones, the second set with bricks, the last one wood is taken from that mountain as you can see the wood carvers of the area in uh, the 18th and 19th century when you can see over there the temple. And 157 different rooms. And all of them. So, primitive heat system. When there is a uh, fire on the fireplace, the pipes they move the hot air in the oven. So, primitive heat system, but very cold. And uh, here, now we can see the church. In the past, here there was another church from 14th century, but it was very small, so that's why the people they decided to demolish it and they built that one in the third decade of 19th century, dedicated to the nativity of Holy Mother of God. All the murals that you can see here outside the inside, they were completely finished by seven different painters in the beginning of the seventh decade of 19th century. And now I will speak and I will stick only to the Christian uh, Orthodox. But I want to tell you something. Uh, many people, let's say that uh, it's very obvious when you're in Bulgaria, you will start thinking that Bulgaria is Christian Orthodox. But this is the thing that I'm very proud of with uh, my The People, in 1879, when they wrote the Constitution, yes, they wrote that the majority of the people said Christian Orthodox. But they wrote that this would be the traditional religion. They wrote that in completely what they want. So Bulgaria so became a pre religious state in the end of the 19th century. This was the most small institution the reason for its time. And now we can see how to crack the statistics. Around 60% of Bulgarians were Christian Orthodox. 
around 20% of the verse of the film is something which is not written, artistic, around uh, uh, 13% Muslim, which is like heritage from the Ottoman world, around 30,000 people Catholics, around 15,000 people Protestant, we have been community of Buddhist people more than 15,000, 7,000 people Jewish, and we have organized very, very big numbers of animals. That's why from the last register, we have one in the future. We follow the four global kilometers by each region. That's the most important thing. But I will stick to the Christian Orthodox temple, that main church. And I want to tell you, this is a very oh. There are two types of churches in Bulgaria. Basilica type, like the heritage of the Romans, and cross type church, because the shape is like a cross. This is a basilica type with two chapels. The north and south chapels dedicated to Nicholas and Saint Ivan of Rio. All the Christian Orthodox churches in Bulgaria, they follow the rules of all great temples. Yeah, you can hear now that sound. Maybe you've been in Greece, maybe you've been in south of Italy. All that Asian temples, they were with that room. Pronouns, this is the room for non-believers, for non pilgrims and of that is the, now, the main temple. That's why now, here behind the columns, you can see many scenes, not just scenes, with demons. There is how they torture exactly the sinner. This is just a stereo to enter inside to be the true believer in the now. So, now I want to tell you what uh, we're going to do. At first, we're going to see the south wall. After that, the west wall, the north wall, after that we will enter inside and after that I want to show you two things, where is the tower and after that uh, I will show you exactly from where you can eat something, the free time or to come with me to the game, okay? To let you know, there are some fountains and you can fill your bottles of water, so fresh out of water. Okay, no. <laughs> ビアエンアレ。タイアレハイ。ワビアエンアレ。サンヨンタ。ザザザ。ワオ、ワオ、ヨジャドアラソ、ワオ。ヨジャドマタイネハレ。アロハンヨルドア、コマビア。スコット。This is the south area of the main church. This is the south chapel, dedicated to Saint Ivan of Rio, the man from the coin, the founder, and you can take him here and to the beach. Because here, we're still in the pronouns. Here you can see very grotesque scenes. That scenes here, we call them the servants of faith. Sometimes the people, they stop believing in Christianity, that stuff, and they start believing in some wonders, in some miracles of some witches. And you can see how all of them, they go to that witch to take a potion, to be strong, healthier. And you can see something that it's not necessary to describe. You can see it very grotesque after that all the people, they were with very dark souls. When we go up, you can see that sometimes in our lives we can make mistakes, but for everything there is a solution, there is a redemption. You can see here on the right, how exactly the father, she asks something, her daughter, and the daughter lies. As you see, she spits snakes, because the devil, he puts his tongue into her ear. And just look the angel over there, you can see the, re the face of the real disappointment. But years passed, and that daughter decided to confess. And you can see that the clouds were removed, the sun came, and she was blessed by the angel. That's why I told her, yes, we could 